Well, it's good to be in God's house now for the third Sunday. I was talking to a, a former staff member. Uh, well, I was talking to a former church member of one of my former churches this past week. And, uh, they were, they, this was going to be their second week back. And, uh, their pastor was my youth minister. And uh, so I said, you tell him that uh, uh, he has my permission, even though I have no authority there anymore, that if he wants to preach with, in pajamas one Sunday, it's okay. And uh, since everybody else has been, for months, have been worshiping in, uh, in pajamas. I don't know if he'll do that or not, but it, I wouldn't put it past him. Well, let me ask you to take your Bibles and open to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Uh, since we uh, slighted Dad a little bit last week uh, on Father's Day, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to slight Dad. We want to give Dad his uh, in his due, and so uh, we want to preach a message. It's just simply entitled this morning, "The Godly Man." The Godly Man, and and uh, uh, you know, the, the Apostle Paul exhorts us. Not just men, but all of us, to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Uh, he, he, he says to us, bear fruit. And he says, grow in grace. And, and so with, with, with that platform, I, I just want to, I want to read this entire uh, first song this morning. And uh, uh, it, it begins this way. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so. But they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment. Nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked will perish. You know, we were singing that old hymn, Holy, 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 a while ago, and uh, that, there's, a, there's a line in that, uh, that, that hymn that, that says, Though the eyes of sinful man thy glory may not see. That's a tragedy. That there is a way, that there is a position, that there is a relationship that there is the hope that, that we can see the glory of God. Now there's a part of God we won't see. As a matter of fact, you know, God passed by Moses when he, he hit him in the cleft of the rock and, and only, only uh, Moses could only see a, a part, but he could see a part of the glory of God. There's a part of the glory of God. But sin will keep us from seeing the glory of God that is available for a child of God to be able to see. I, I want us to just begin this morning by looking at some very important words in the first few verses of this psalm. The, the first word I want us to look to is the word walk. Walk. Uh, this is a word that refers to how we make our daily decisions. And we make our daily decisions, all of us, based on our world view. Now, every one of us in this room has a world view. And there's only two. There's either a biblical world view, or there is a secular world view. And the godly man, the godly woman, the, the godly person, we're to make our decisions based on a biblical worldview. We're to base our decisions based on uh, the Word of God. Now, we can say we believe the Bible. 
We can, we can say like I've heard somebody say, well, I believe it from cover to cover. I even believe it where it says genuine leather. <laughs> but really, how we show that we believe the Word of God is how we respond to the Word of God. How we behave according to the Word of God. How we run our business. How we treat our neighbor or fellow man. How we love our spouse. How, how we raise our children as well as how we obey the Lord. Walk. And it says that the, the godly man is first of all blessed, but he does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. We'll get to that word later. Here's the other word I want to look at. Stand. Uh, I don't have it on today, but I've got, I've got one of those smart watches. It's uh, Apple Watch. And, and if I sit long enough, it will vibrate and it'll say to me, time to stand. Now, the first time it did that, I'm thinking, it is, it is a smart watch. <laughs> it's evidently smarter than I am because it's telling me it's time for me to stand. That's not what we're talking about. This word, this word stand here is, is a, a word that's making reference to our commitments and our convictions in life. It, it's a commitment and a conviction to a particular way of life. You know, uh, people, people have preferences. I've got preferences. I mean, I, I prefer sausage to bacon, but I'm not going to throw away bacon just because I don't have sausage. I have opinions. You have opinions. We all have preferences and opinions. Most of us won't die for our preferences. Most of us won't die for our opinions. And we might act like it sometimes, but we really won't. But we will die for it. We will die for something that, that means that much to us. But listen to what Paul says in uh, the book of Ephesians. It's that, it's that uh, passage of Scripture where it talks about the full armor of God. He says, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. He says down in verse 13, therefore, take up the full armor of God. So that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. And then in verse 14, stand firm therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And so Paul is saying that the, the, the godly man, the godly person, the one that wants to live godly in Christ Jesus, dresses a certain way has on the spiritual armor so that he might be able to stand in the day of battle. David is before King Saul. And, you know, David's already said, listen, I don't know about anybody else, but he's not going to talk about my God that way. And, you know, he had his, you know, he had his sling, you know, had his pouch, and Saul tried to put his armor on him, and he put it on him. It was just, you know, Saul was a giant of a man, not as big as Goliath, but he's a pretty big dude. And, you know, they wouldn't fit David. They said, I can't use this. I haven't tested them. But he had tested that sleeve. I mean, he, you know, he was pretty good with that thing. I mean, when you can, when you, can you know, take a piece of leather with two strings and sling a rock around and let that thing go, and it goes in the fart of a giant and he's down, you're pretty good with that thing. He said, I haven't tested this, but I've tested this sleeve. And I'm ready to stand before this giant. Beloved, we need to be dressed right in the armor and in the Word of God that we might stand firm. That we might stand when we find ourselves in the path of sinners. Then there's this word that the Bible gives us. In Mark chapter 3, verses 24 and 25, it says, If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. So we're to walk in a certain way. We're to, we're to stand for biblical things. And then here's the word sit. This is a word that refers to a, 
uh, a settled state of the heart. You know, when, when we're not sitting right, when our heart isn't settled, somebody can somebody can talk us into something, then somebody can definitely come along and talk us out of that something. But when when our heart is settled, when, when, when it's firm, when, when, when we know that we know that we know what we believe, you know, you, you, know, you can't talk me out of it. You can't talk me into it. Because my heart is settled. It, 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 we're talking about total identification. Because you see, godly people watch where they go and who they go with. Uh, the, the, the psalmist. Turn, turn, this, 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 look, turn over to chapter 26 of this psalm. Of, 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 of the psalms. Psalm 26. Look at verses 4 and 5. I want you to have time to read more. Let's look at verses 4. I do not sit with deceitful men. This is a, a settled man. No, I go with pretenders. I hate the assembly of evildoers. And I will not sit with the wicked. Over in Psalm 119, verse 9, you know, I, I remember the days of vacation Bible school when I, when I was a kid. You know, that was... They, they weren't as cool as they are today. I mean, vacation Bible school was pretty much military every year. You know, you know we marched in, had the flags. You know, the, there was several Bible verses that we just sort of interchanged, and they, they sort of came back right around about every three or four years. I mean, well, we done got cool to them. We got we got Western themes and Hawaiian themes and that. And I'm not like that's, that's good. I mean, I, that would have kept really kept my interest as a kid. But I remember it seemed like about every third year, this was our this was our motto verse. This was our memory. It was someone, how can a young man keep his way pure? And what the psalmist is saying there is that he understood that there was a pure way. There was a pure path. And he also understood if there's a pure way, if there's a pure path, there's an impure way. There's an impure path. So how can a young man keep his way pure? And then a couple of verses later he answers his own question. By keeping it according to thy word. Then he says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. You know, this is the first day that I've been with you. It's been that uh, I've been able to breathe through my nose. Now, if you've got sinus problems, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it, it's... it's, it's it has been bad. And, and so I've been taking some decongestants. I mean, I've tried everything. You know, I even took something the other night that I slept and I slept and I slept. And uh, I felt good the next morning. But you know what? I could have just, I could have just stayed. And you know, I like this and the rest of the time I was with you, you know? <laughs> you know and, and, and you'd have been, you know. But as, as a godly man, as a godly woman, as a godly person, we know there's a pure way. We know there's an impure way. I remember as a teenager growing up in my mom and daddy's home, but uh, uh, it would be Friday night, you know, Friday nights, you know, when you was a teenager, you had your driver's license. You, know, you, you went somewhere where you had anywhere to go or not, you know. And in Monroe, it was, we circled the dairy room. Okay? And then on the other end of town, there was a, another uh, burger place that wasn't as consistent as a dairy queen. It changed names because it changed hands about every two or three years. I cannot remember all the different names it was, but it was there. And so uh, the, my neighbor, the guy who's across the street from me right now, was the chief of police. And so, I, I mean, I knew he knew where I lived. I knew he, you know, knew my mom and dad. And, uh, and uh, you know, he, he was really nice. He'd come around, all right, boys, it's time to move on. There was a sign that said, no more. I don't remember when you what that meant, but, that, but it meant, for him, it meant move on. So we'd get in our cars and we'd drive down and we would circle that other burger place and we'd park. Show enough, a few minutes later, here he come. All right, boys, it's time to move on. Guess where we went? Get back to the dairy <laughs> I mean, gas wasn't but 25 cents a gallon back then, you know, so I mean, you know, you could, you could go all weekend on a dollar and a half worth of gas, you know. 
And we would, we would, we would do, you know, we would do things like that. You know, and, and you know, I look back on that. And one of the reasons he kept us moving is because he'd been our angel for. And the longer we sit there, the closer trouble was coming toward us. And so he'd have us move on down to the other street. Wait a little while, he'd we'd move on back. You know, we, he, hey, he was keeping us out of the path of stupidity. Because listen, I can find it. And don't y'all look at me with those pious faces. <laughs> y'all been that age before. You know, listen, when you're young, you can find stupid when you ain't even looking for it. You know? You can just run right smack dab into it. Listen, the, the psalmist says, I will, I do not sit with deceitful men. I have. I will not go with pretenders. I have. I hate the assembly of evildoers. I've been there. I will not sit with the wicked. I've been there. And so you've got to make a choice. You choose the pure path. You choose God's highway. So what about said, if you choose to run with the dogs, you're going to get fleas. Listen. Walk. Stand. Sit. Here's another word. Here's the word. The word in, in uh, uh, verse 3. Uh, verse, or the latter part of verse 1. Scoffers. But here's what that word scoff. You know, we, we think of scoffers as someone who scoffs at someone. It's sort of maybe just arrogant. Kind of, but here the word scoffer is a word that means that they tend to blame their fault on somebody else. You know, I'm the way I am because of this circumstance and, and that circumstance. You know, I, I, you know I'm not wrong. I, I'm not at fault. I mean, when, when the, the, the word scoff here means that when someone, this person is confronted with the consequences of their actions, they make excuses. It's my, the culture I grew up in, it's my, it's my heritage, it's my family, it's my environment, it's, it's, my, it's my peers, but won't take the responsibility. Here's, I like what John Guest, I don't know who John Guest is, but I like what he said. He said, I went to my psychologist to be psychoanalyzed. To find out why I killed the cat and blackened my wife's eyes. He laid me down on a downy couch to see what he could find. And this is what he dredged up from my subconscious mind. When I was one, my mommy locked my daughter in the trunk. And so it follows naturally that I'm always drunk. When I was two, I saw my father kiss the maid one day. That is why I suffer from kleptomania. When I was three, I suffered from ambivalence toward my brothers. That is why I poisoned all my lovers. I'm glad since I've learned that lesson so well taught that everything I do that's wrong is someone else's fault. <laughs> Met people like that. It's always somebody else's fault. Now here's that word, wicked. The word wicked here is not just the abortionist or the adulterer or the, or the murderer. The, the wicked here is, is the person that lives their life without any thought of God. It's to be without hope and without God in the world. You know, uh, you know one of the reasons that People are so messed up in this world. It's no, they're always looking out for number one. And they, they think they have the right to live like they want to. And, you know, it's, it's okay to, to bend the rules as long as I don't get caught. It reminds me of our older two grandsons that just left, go back to California yesterday. They spent some time with us and they went over to Louisiana to the other in-laws. Uh, uh, but when, uh, when Elijah and Sam were real young, I'm going to say three and one, you know, something like that, four and two. Uh, Shot heard Sam crying from the other room. And so Mama goes to check on it. And there Sam sits on the floor, got his hands over his face, and he's crying. And Elijah's sort of on the other side of the room. He's the other And uh, Shana says, uh, Elijah, did you hurt Sam? 
Now, what I'm about to tell you will let you know that he's got some of my genes. He said, did you see me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were all conceived in sin. We all came into this world with a, a propensity to wickedness. And uh, even after we're saved, we can commit wicked deeds, but we're no longer to be wicked. So this next few moments we've got together, I, I would just point out three things about the godly man from our text. Here, here's the first one. The, the godly man is identified by what he does not do. He does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. He does not stand in the path of sinners. He does not sit in the seat of scoffers. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. And so, Men, and everyone for that matter this morning, are your closest friends champions for or enemies of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ? Uh, Proverbs 13, 20, The one who walks with the wise will become wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. Listen, don't let the culture around you determine your worth. Because let me tell you, really, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you how your worth was determined. On a hill far away, on an old rugged cross, the Son of God laid down his life. And on that, in, in that one act, just, just that one act, he says, you're worth it. You're worth it. You're worthy. The Son of God took my sin and your sin upon Himself. Listen, if our lives are account for Him, they, they've, got to, they've got to bear witness that we are strangers and aliens in this world. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. And even though we need to anchor deep within the Word of God, we don't need to put down, we don't need to put down strong roots in this world because we're leaving. We're leaving. There's coming a day when we're going to be out of here. I went to a funeral of a dear friend's wife just uh, on, on a, a Friday. And a sweet, precious lady. And her husband's a dear a friend of mine. And it was a, uh, it was a tragedy. But her service was a service of celebration because there is no doubt, no wonder. We don't even have to, we don't have to think twice about where she is for to be absent from the body for a child of God is to be present with the Lord. I heard about this drunk that stumbled onto a city bus. And he sat down next to this rather uh, dignified lady. And it was obvious to her. She didn't have to really think. I mean, he was drunk. She could smell the, the alcohol. And uh, I'm, I'm sure if she'd have thought twice, she might have changed what she said. But uh, uh, he said, hey, lady. And she said, you're drunk. And you're going to hell. And he said, oops, wrong bus. <laughs> Beloved, that's... That's the way the wicked looks at it. It's case of Ross Law. You know? I mean, this, this, this thing called life is just going to end and that's going to be the end of it. But the Word of God says that, that, that every person will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible says that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, so the, the, the godly man we find out is he, he's identified with what he separates himself from, who he separates himself from, uh, the, the things he runs from, the things, that, the, the, the path he does not 
you know. It was my uh, graduation night. And uh, there was going to be a senior party. Now I did not even have to I did not even have to think about asking my daddy if I could go to that party. I knew what the answer would be. But now I'm just 17, okay? Not to not be 17, but that's just that's the fact of it. A friend of mine, knowing that I would not be allowed to go to that party, uh, Brother Scott, uh, asked me if he could borrow my bass amplifier. Don't, don't y'all get too impressed. I did play in a band in high school, but don't get it. That was so many years ago. I, don't, I have a guitar now, but that's about it. And I said, uh, yeah, you can. So he come by, he picked it up, you know, and so after graduation, I'm thinking, you know, poor pitiful me, I'm the only one in my senior class that's not been allowed to go to this party. Now, I later found out half the others weren't allowed either, you know. But I got to thinking, man, that shows an expensive amplifier. I'm going to go check on it. And after I'd circled one row a couple of times in my pity party, I said, I'm just going to ride out there. I'm going to run out to that farm where they're going to have this party. And I'm just going to check it out. I just want to make sure everything's good. And uh, I remember pulling and, you know, there was, a, there was a cow gate. I don't have to go into that. I ain't got time to go into that right now. Those of you know what I'm talking about. There was a cow gate there as you entered into this dirt road, going down to this road to, to this farm. And as, as I pulled into my 65 Chevrolet in power, and my lights hit that gate, there stood my daddy. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't there. He really wasn't physically there, but he was there. Okay? You get me, you get me drift, kids? He was there. Because I knew I should have been there. And I remember looking, I saw it, and I, uh-huh. It was years before I told my daddy this story. And uh, I remember backing up, and I headed home. I was home by 10 30 that night. Because you see, Dad, let me tell you how important it is for you to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Because there's eyes on you. There's eyes on you. Watching everything you do. The godly man is identified by what he does not do. But secondly, the godly man is known by what he delights in. He delights in the Word of God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. I don't know about you, but there are some times that I will sit just with the word of God in my lap and I'll just be reading along and I'll, sometimes I'll read large portions of scripture. But sometimes I won't get past one verse. And uh, it's like the Holy Spirit just sits down right there. And I, you know, I, there's, there's, you know, there's more in my Bible plan. There's more. I got, God, I got to cover a little more ground today if I'm going to keep up. I thought, no, 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 we're going to sit right here. He'll sit right here. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Jeremiah writes this in Jeremiah 15, 16. Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became for me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I have been called by your name, O Lord of hosts. So here we are. A love for the Lord plus a love for his word will put you on a path for a lifestyle of God. Very quickly, we've got to move on. Thirdly, the godly man has learned that he is to grow deep in the grace of God. Listen, the, 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 the godly life is one that is blessed, and as a result of being blessed, blesses others. I mean, the psalmist says that this, this godly man is like a, a tree that's that's not just planted in an old dry field, but he's planted by a river, by, by streams of water, and its roots uh, go down into good, rich soil. You see, th this, this tree doesn't have to worry about dry roots. This, this tree doesn't have to worry about dry leaves. 
because of the, the moisture, because of the water that's continually nourishing that tree. Nourished by the river of life. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Paul writes in Colossians 1.23, If indeed you continue in the faith, firmly established and steadfast, and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven. So, there's fruit in the life of the godly man. You know, fruit is the external evidence of something internal. In other words, when you go to a peach tree, you expect to get peaches, not apples. Because in the DNA of that peach tree is that which is necessary to produce peaches. You go to a pear tree, you expect to get pears, not prunes, or not, uh, not oranges, but, or prunes. You know, you, 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 expect to, you expect to get a pear. And we can go that way with, with, with any fruit. And in the DNA of a child of God is the, it is, is God kind of fruit. And, and God describes it for us in this way, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, self-control. And of which Paul goes on to say later, there is no law against living that kind of life. You don't get, you know, you don't get in trouble living by the fruit of the Spirit. But it's also telling us that we can't produce what we don't have. The fruit of my life will eventually show up. The psalmist says that the leaf of a godly man does not wither. So I'll close with this. Uh, this is something that I think that uh, it, it can be something that is like a checklist for us guys on a daily basis. Uh, something we need to, to do often as we uh, as we walk through life, it is, it's our desire, it's our intent to, to, to live godly in Christ Jesus. Um, it's, it's on my calendar. It's uh, sometime toward the end of September, the 1st of October, because I have to wait a year and a day. I go to my doctor for a physical. You know, he checks me out. He checks all kinds of different things. I go and I give blood, and then, then I get that phone call from him saying to Harris, you're on that cholesterol medicine, but you still ain't doing what you need to do. If it tastes good, spit it out. <laughs> uh, but I go for my checkup. And so, God, we, we need to check our heart. You know, we need to check our spiritual heart on a regular basis. Where has it been? Where has my heart been? Because I'm telling you something, beloved, where my heart has been is going to have a big impact on where it's headed. Where it's going to go. So, so check your heart. Then guard your heart. Guard your heart from temptation. You know, I mean, uh, temptation's coming. We're not immune from temptation. Uh, matter of fact, it, 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 the, the Word of God says there's no temptation that has overtaken you. Because sometimes if we're not careful, temptation will overtake us. If we don't fight, if we don't flee, if we don't run it, because we're, we're to flee temptation. But sometimes it overtakes us. There is no temptation that has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted to the point beyond that point because He has endured. Jesus has won the victory. We live in His victory. He is our victor. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a sports fan. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a football fan. I'm one of those crazy, you know, persons that, you know, that'll, that'll say, you know, we're number one. I ain't going to tackle all night, you know. You know, we're number one. I ain't, you know, hit the quarterback yet, you know. I'm number one. You know, I mean, no, I'm not, you know. But I am enjoying the victory and the spoils of victory of the team that I root for. Listen, we're victors in Christ Jesus. We need to live like it. We need to act like it. We do have an adversary. 
The devil who wants to trip us up and wants to tempt us in any way. So we have to guard our heart from temptation. We have to guard our heart from lust. We, we must guard our heart from idolatry. I, I guarantee you, every one of us, if, if we were to get before God and ask God, just, just, just God, are there any idols in my life? You'd be surprised. What you wouldn't uncover but what the Holy Spirit can uncover as we, as we uh, look at it. We, we can turn a lot of things into idols. The Bible says, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And set your heart. Uh, every now and then I'll have to replace a battery in my you know, standard watch. Uh, uh, every spring and every fall, you know, Somebody had this great idea back years ago that we would go to daylight savings time. And so we, we uh, fall back and we spring fall. And, it, and they do it on Sunday. They do it. They did do it. They miss Sunday up, Two weeks out of the year. You know that? And, uh, you know, but we have to set our clocks. And, uh, when you reach our age, you, you do it on Saturday afternoon about 3 o'clock. You know, and you include yourself thinking, we didn't lose that hour. Oh, you know, and we didn't really gain that hour. Nothing has really changed. And so, you know, you do that. But, uh, you know, listen, we need to set our heart to the right. Set our heart on the things of God. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to thy word. And then, finally, we invest our heart. Invest our heart into the things of God. Invest our heart uh, and pour our life uh, into our marriage, into our children, uh, into our communities, uh, uh, into our church for the godly man is a blessed man and his leaf does not wither and in whatever he does, he prospers. And no, 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 don't get me wrong, this is not one of those... Uh, you know, name it, claim it type sermons. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about God. God's already made up his mind what he will bless and what he will not bless. There's no confusion in heaven about where the blessings of God goes. And so as we walk, as, you know, as, as, as we walk the Calvary Road, you know, not to Calvary, Although if you've never been, that's a great place to be this morning. It's walking to Calvary. But for those of us that are in Christ Jesus, we walk the Calvary road from Calvary with the shadow of the cross upon our lives. Step by step, following in the footsteps of Jesus. That's what he blesses. That's what he blesses. And God this morning is looking at our hearts. And it is... He, he, he's like that daddy that wants to bless his child and he can't wait. You know? my, my daddy was a kid on Christmas morning. And you know, we never, and, and he was the master at hiding things. But you should have seen his face on Christmas morning as we boys would come running down the hall and see what Santa brought. You know? I mean, he was that, I mean, I mean, I, I can't remember because I was just one year old when I got that Lionel train. And can you imagine a, line, a, a one year old playing with a Lionel train? Well, my daddy showed had a good time on the train. <laughs> See, listen, the Father longs to bless us, and He's already determined what He will bless. But, oh, beloved, if you're watching, my live stream, or if you're in this room this morning, and you've never been to Calvary, you've never enjoyed the experience of having the blessing of God on your life. You, 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 you've never felt that, that full conviction of knowing that you're a sinner. And sin separates from God. Sin will separate you from a God that loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son that you might be saved. Oh, I, if I could do it for you, I would, but I can't. But I beg you, trust Jesus. Say, Lord God, I'm a sinner. 
I deserve hell and death. But I understand by your word that you judged in Jesus what I would be judged for. You put upon your precious son what should have been put upon me. He became sin for me that I could be made right with God. Think about that. God punished in his son what was my due punishment that I could be made right with God. I should have gone to the principal's office, but Jesus took the place. I should have been declared guilty and been in hell's prison. But Jesus took my punishment for me. And all I have to do is by faith. I don't even have to fully understand it. Just by faith say, yes, God. Yes. I trust you. I repent. I make you my Lord. You do for me what I can't do for myself.